Hi everybody, welcome back. We are going to soccer today and it is in the next county over, which means we get to go to Aldi to do our grocery shopping for this first video. So stay tuned. I'm probably not gonna take you into the store because I'm not gonna do that. But I am gonna show you what we got. So let's go. Okay. Okay guys, I was stressing bad in the store. Jackie had her calculator, I had the list, and we came out at $50.14. So we were over by 14 cents, but we had our cart given to us by a very lovely man, and there was nobody for us to return the favor to, so we got a quarter back. So does that count? No. Or is that I cheating? Don't think, yeah, I, I, think I don't know. Cheating. I don't know. I think that's cheating. But either way, we were 14 cents over, but we got everything we needed to complete our meals for this week. So let's get cooking. Okay, everybody, we are back from the store and I wanted to show you everything that $50.14 bought us for the week. I'm not going to go through everything because I'm going to lay the meals out for you. But you see, it really wasn't a whole lot. You're going to find that your meats are going to be where most of your money is spent. But... We do have a pretty good meal plan for this week's setup. This is our meal plan for the week. So I call this cook once, eat twice, or even more often than that. So the first night we're going to roast a chicken and have it with carrots, broccoli, and sweet potatoes. Then we're going to have chicken noodle soup, quesadillas. You could flip-flop those nights. Then we're going to build a night in for leftovers and we'll do breakfast for supper, pasta with sausage, and then we'll have another leftover night. And if we don't have anything leftover, we'll have grilled cheese with tomato soup. So these are our suppers. I'm gonna walk you through the steps of how to do each one of these. Okay, so there is gonna be a little bit of prep work that you're gonna have to do. It's not gonna be a lot, I promise, but you are gonna have to make your breakfasts ahead of time prep your vegetables, and we have to make our own milk. Yeah, you notice guys, I didn't buy any milk because it's so expensive. So why buy it when we can make it from the oats that we bought? So we're gonna make oat milk, and we're gonna use that to make our breakfast waffles, and we're also gonna use that to make overnight oats as well. So let me show you how to do it. In your blender, you want six cups of cold water and then we're going to use one cup of oats. All right you're going to see how the oats are going to settle down to the bottom. We're going to blend this. You do not need a Vitamix or a high-speed blender to do this so don't get discouraged if you don't have one. You just want to blend this all up. Now if you have a well-stocked pantry and you have some vanilla you can put a teaspoon of vanilla in this too and that will help sweeten it up just a little bit. So go ahead and blend this until it turns white and milky. You're going to need either a nut bag like this or you're going to need a fine mesh strainer with maybe some cheesecloth lined in it because we have to strain the bits out of this to get the bulk of it out. So we're going to Drain this through and you'll see what I mean here in a minute. Try not to squeeze it too much because the more you squeeze it, the it's just it tastes better if you don't really try to squeeze it. But you want to strain this as best as you can and if you have to let it hang, let it hang. But you're going to see a lot of sediment in this bag right here. You can keep this sediment and make cookies out of it, add chocolate chips to it, or what we're going to do, we're going to take it down and feed it to our chickens. At this point, we do have milk, 
but I suggest you run it through your blender again and strain it a second time because it does make a difference in the taste. And then once you have done that, we'll put it into a vessel and then you can put it in your fridge for the week and you will have milk. Okay, so I put our flour into a large container and we're going to make waffles for breakfast. So we're going to need two cups of flour. To this, we're going to need four teaspoons of baking powder. Now, I am under the assumption that you guys have that ingredient, and I'm hoping that you do. If not, I would say try the Dollar Tree first to see if that is a good place to pick that up. Stir this all up really, really well. To this, we're going to add a teaspoon of sugar and just a pinch of salt. All right. So what wasn't on my list was sugar, baking powder, and salt. I am under the assumption that you have these items. If not, we can't make homemade waffles. So that's my assumption and I'm sorry as of making this that I did not put those on the list. All right, stir that all in. Now we're gonna need two cups of the milk that we just made. Now, if you let this milk sit overnight or for any period of time, you're gonna have to mix it or stir it because it will settle and it will separate. So you just need to stir it a little bit and, you know, I mean, it's milk, guys. It's oat milk. All right, mix this up really, really well. And this is your waffle mix. And then just use your waffles for breakfast. And waffles freeze really well too, so that way if you don't use all of them this week, you will have waffles left over for next week. To this, this is just your base recipe. To this, if you have any frozen fruits, if you have, if you wanna use chopped up banana and put make these banana waffles, you could do that. Uh, blueberries work well in this. Strawberries do too. You can add whatever you want to or chocolate chips if you want. If you have that within your budget to be able to stretch it. But this is really good just like this, just as it is. So we're going to make all of these up and we're going to see how many we get for the week. We had 11 waffles we made so this will be enough for Jackie to have breakfast every day this week. What we do is we're going to take a little bit of peanut butter, smear it on the top of them, and then have some sliced apples to go with that, and that will be breakfast. Next on the list is we have to prepare our celery. I wish we grew celery, and I'm going to try it this year, because when you buy store-bought celery, it takes the best part of it off, which is all the leafy, the leafy greens. You can make a salad with the leafy ends on the top of celery but the stores cut them off. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna wash this and then we're going to store it for the week using it for my lunches and for our chicken noodle soup. What I do is take an old canning jar or this is an old mayonnaise, a glass mayonnaise jar and I will cut my celery into sticks, put it in here and cover it with water two hour jar of already sliced celery. I'm just gonna add some cold water in until it is completely covered. Just like that. We're gonna put a lid on this, seal it, and put it in the fridge. Now when you go to eat one, it's already cut, it's already sliced, the hard work's done, and it will store much longer preserved and in the fridge this way. Also, we have our bag of celery scraps in here to make a really good base for our chicken stock that we're gonna do later here. So you're also gonna wanna keep in mind that we're also gonna put some of our onions in here, onion scraps, and some carrots in here that we purchased as well. 
If you didn't already know this, whenever you purchase cheese, it is most often cheaper to buy it in a block like this than it is to purchase it already shredded. So what we're going to do is we're going to shred probably three quarters of this. Then we're going to slice the rest for lunches and to make grilled cheese sandwiches out of. I'm going to be using a box shredder and I always use the largest holes whenever I do it and I shred on wax or parchment paper because it makes it easier to lift this whole contraption up to put it into a refrigeratable bag or container. So you're just going to start the whole shredding process and then shred this entire chunk. Now this cheese will be used for our chicken quesadillas that we're going to make for dinner and then we're going to use this on top of our pasta bake that we're going to do later in the week. Now we also have sliced cheese that we're going to do here in a minute and we're going to use that for grilled cheese and just to eat with lunch. Here is our shredded cheese. This will definitely be enough for us for quesadillas and the pasta bake that we're going to do. And we're going to store this in a Ziploc bag. And guys, I reuse my Ziploc bags. Like if I'm going to do cheese, I will make my cheese, put it in the Ziploc bag, and then once I'm done, I will wash this bag out, dry it upside down, and use it again. Because these are not cheap. And if I'm not putting meat in them, I will wash them out and reuse them again. So that is something you can do. Now, if you do not use all of this shredded cheese, you can freeze this. Cheese is freezable. Slice all of your cheese that way. Or if you don't have one of these handy-dandy tools, use a knife. But I figure since I already had this dirty, I would just use it to make my cheese slices. Just please be careful you don't cut yourself because that is a very sharp blade on the cutter. But it is pretty slick how it just cuts them right off. Here is all of our sliced cheese to make sandwiches. Now mind you, I am only a family of three, so this will be enough cheese for grilled cheese and for me to have a slice or two with my lunch with my celery sticks. One of our breakfast options is overnight oats. So in a cleaned out Greek yogurt container, I have two cups of my rolled oats that I bought. And to that, I'm going to add two cups of the milk that we just made. That's our oat milk. And if you are making this, I would suggest using a bigger container because this does expand. And this will feed us for several days. And then we're going to add two cups of the yogurt that we purchased as well to this. Now this is better with Greek yogurt, but it also works with plain yogurt too. There's one. All right, and there's our second cup. Now very carefully <laughs> mix this up and don't spill it. Put this in the refrigerator and then divvy it out during the week as we want. I would eat this probably within three days because it will get nasty if you don't. Okay guys, so that took literally about 45-50 minutes from making the milk to the waffles to cutting up some of the prep stuff that we needed for the week. Now all we have to do is assemble everything whenever it con comes time to make our meals. Okay guys, here is breakfast. This is overnight oats with some apple and cinnamon on it. And a quick tip, if you have leftover apple slices that you want to pack and have them not turn brown, soak them in some salt water for maybe 10 minutes and then drain that water off and they will not turn brown. So if you don't have lemon, this is a good alternative to do. But this is breakfast. You can also make your overnights this way too by taking 
a big spoonful of your peanut butter and melting it and then drizzling it over top of your overnight oats. It's delicious that way too. Another option for breakfast is using the avocado that you have and making avocado toast for a couple mornings. Here's an example of lunch out of the meal plan. We've got apples, some baby carrots, and then some of our quesadillas. And I have a side of sour cream for her to dip these in. And she's also getting a little baggie of the tortilla chips as well. We're going to alternate this out with peanut butter sandwiches. But this is the basic concept for the week. Alright guys, it is day one of our meal plan. It's freezing outside. We are stacking wood. I'm not taking my hat off, but we need to get supper started. So we are roasting a chicken. Now, I roast my chickens a little differently because if we have our own birds, we usually skin them because it's so much easier than plucking off the feathers and I will not pay for a plucker because we are not that big of an operation that it's worth the cost. So, I get used I'm used to roasting my chickens a little bit differently than the traditional method. So, I'll show you what I use. I have purchased one of these roasting pans and what I will do is put my chicken in here, put water in the bottom of it, and then I will take an onion and put in the cavity of the chicken, sprinkle salt and pepper over top of it or any other seasonings you have. And then I roast it at 375 for an hour and 20 minutes typically is about the right time for the size of the birds that we have. All right, guys, dinner number one is going to be our roasted chicken. And with that, we're going to have three of the sweet potatoes and the whole bag of broccoli. We're going to roast this in the oven at 425 for probably 20 minutes and we'll check it. I know my pan's not big enough, so I don't know how this is going to go. Um, but we decided to leave the carrots out of it for tonight because there was so much broccoli in that bag that I think we'll be okay. Our chicken is done roasting, so we're just going to let this sit and cool down a little bit before we start taking the meat off of it because it is way too hot to handle. So what we're going to do is we're going to debone it, and then we're going to put the carcass in the Instant Pot. Alright, and there is dinner number one. We've got chicken breast with sweet potatoes and broccoli. This is the leftover chicken that we have, and this is a relatively large container. It holds 10 cups, and it's about half full. We will be using our Instant Pot to make our chicken stock with. Put your carcass in along with your vegetables, including the celery, maybe 10 baby carrots, and chop up half an onion. Put that in there as well. Fill it up to the max line with water. And then we're going to pressure cook this for an hour and a half with a natural release, okay? And if you have any extras like a bay leaf, peppercorns, salt, Put that in as well, along with a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar. You can't go wrong with that, and you can't taste it. So this is how we're making our broth for our chicken noodle soup. What we need to do now is strain all of the particles out of the broth, and we're just going to use a strainer into a bowl to collect all of our stuff, and then we're going to compost the shreds of vegetable then. This right here is our delicious chicken stock, and look at how beautiful that looks. So what we're going to do, we're going to put this in the refrigerator once this has cooled down. It is the next day, and you can see I just took this out of the fridge, and you'll notice that there is a layer of these little particles. This is the fat that has collected on the top. If it's really bad, you can skim it off and throw it away. Now what we're going to do with this, we're going to reserve six cups of it for our chicken noodle soup. I'm going to measure that out. And then we're going to pour it into a mason jar. And then we're going to keep this in the fridge for tomorrow for whenever we make our chicken noodle soup. I needed two jars to put my six cups of broth in to make my soup. 
and guys, I have plenty of extra, which is what we want. So what we're going to do is put them into Ziploc bags because I know not everybody cans or pressure cans. So we're going to do it this way. And I have quart size bags and in the description I have two cups of chicken stock on there. Now what this is good for is if you want to make soup again, you're going to have the broth to make soup again. If you'd like to have flavored rice, usually rice is two cups of liquid to one cup of rice. You can use your stock that we're going to put in this baggie to have your equivalents correct. That way you don't have to mess and fuss with it later. So measure out two cups of broth and then we're going to pour it directly into our bag. We're going to seal this up and take all of the air out of it. Once you have sealed it, I prefer to freeze mine flat because then you can stack them vertically in your freezer and it will save space. But I do freeze them in a shallow dish just in case there is any leakage out of your bags. In total, we ended up with six cups of broth to make our chicken noodle soup this week. And we also have two, four, six cups of extra that we are going to freeze. So right here, you're probably saving yourself $6 for a next shopping trip by making your own broth. Because now that's broth that you're not going to have to purchase to make flavored rice or an additional batch of chicken noodle soup. For tonight's supper, we're making chicken quesadillas. So I've got my pan heating up. I'm going to put a little bit of spray on it. And I bought a bag of wraps. Now they are the smaller wraps, and there are 20 of them in a bag. Place some of my chicken. And then the bag of cheese that we shredded. We're going to put some of that on the top, just like that. Take another wrap and place right on top. And then we're just going to let this cook for a couple minutes on both sides and it'll be done. All right, and this is what the final product looks like. Um, we're each getting one and a half because they are pretty small once they are cut up. And then we're using a dollop of the sour cream that we purchased as well. And I'm going to cut up an apple and we're going to have apple slices to go with this. So this is a very good, delicious, and affordable dinner that came from our roasted chicken. Hello, day three here. So um, it is freezing outside today. It is only 17 degrees and it's 10 o'clock in the morning. And we picked a perfect day to use up the rest of our chicken and make a chicken noodle soup. Now, hopefully this will give us enough to have leftovers for the rest of the week for lunches and one night for supper. We are also going to make crusty bread. Now, I already have a video out on how to make crusty bread, which I will link in the description below for you. And we need to get started because we have a busy night tonight. Once again, we have sports practices again. So <laughs> we have to have everything done before Sis gets home from school. So let's go. Okay, guys, this is what we are using to create our chicken noodle soup. We've got egg noodles back here. We have our six cups of stock, salt and pepper, our baby carrots. We're going to use some of our celery. We're going to use one of our onions and then the remainder of our leftover chicken that we have. To make our soup, we have to saute our vegetables first. Now, I did not buy oil this week, and that's okay. Pour some of your vegetable broth in the bottom of the pan. I'm sorry. Pour some of your chicken broth in the bottom of the pan, and then turn it on and get your heat pretty high there to get your pan hot. You can saute your vegetables in either the chicken stock that we made or water. You do not need oil. Dice up all of your vegetables finely. I have probably 12 of the baby carrots, a bunch of sticks of the celery sliced up really finely, and then I only used a half of an onion. Now, if you do have garlic in your pantry, you could throw a couple cloves of garlic in this as well. And then throw this into your hot pot. Our vegetables have soaked up quite a bit of the liquid, 
and they've been cooking in this pot that I have for probably nine minutes, almost 10 minutes. And what we're going to do next is dump in the rest of our chicken stock. We're going to bring this to a boil and then we're going to turn it down to simmer. And what you want to do once it gets warm is taste it for salt and pepper and then adjust accordingly. Now, if you have any herbs on hand, I know thyme is really good in this. If you don't have any, it's okay. It's still going to taste great. I add my chicken then. Now, it hasn't quite reached that boiling point yet to simmer, but I'm dropping my chicken in because my chicken's cold. So it's going to drop the temperature here of my liquid. We're going to put our egg noodles in. And guys, we're not using this whole bag, like not even close. Now these cook for six to eight minutes with the variety that I got. Check the back of your bag to make sure how long to cook your noodles. And then just taste them to make sure that they are done before you serve them. And look, we have like half a bag left. Woohoo! All right, guys. Our soup is done, so you can see we have a delicious homemade chicken noodle soup. And our crusty bread, which is ready to slice into. So all of this took 45 minutes to bake because we did this in the morning and left it sit all day to rise and then put it in the oven at the same time we started our soup. So you can see, we've got soup and bread. All right guys, tonight we're gonna do a pasta bake. It's gonna be super simple to do. Into the oven at 350 for probably 15 minutes. And here is our dinner for tonight. We have our pasta bake with a slice of our homemade bread. This is the final night for our meal plan for the week. We are having breakfast, so I am frying up some sausages and the rest of the patties I have put in the freezer for next week. And I made up another batch of waffles, so we're gonna have that with this. So guys, that is supper for tonight. And here's our final dinner. Now, if you had eggs to pair with this, that would be a good option as well. But if you don't, this makes a really good supper all on its own. All right, guys, that wraps up the first week of our series on meal planning on a budget. I hope that it was useful for you. And a quick side note, I wanna show you the food that we have left over for next week. All right, we still have a ton of onions, almost a full bag of sweet potatoes. Now, the peanut butter is pretty skimpy here. We probably have enough for two sandwiches left in here. We have a half a bag of our egg noodles and probably a half of a container of oats left as well. We also have four sausage patties. And then, don't forget, we have our chicken broth that we made. We have three of these that we can put in the freezer to use for soup or flavored rice or whatever you want to use it for. Thank you so much for watching us, and take care and God bless. Bye.